Good morning, everyone. Welcome hey. to today's installment of the self Given webinar series, Curating Insights for Business Leaders. Uh, if you're wondering, just double check on this Friday morning, you are up into digital upskilling beyond the hype what really works. So just double check you're in the right space. Um, I'm Michelle and I'm the Chief People Officer of Self-Driven Enterprise, the company behind the self-driven digital employee experience tech talent engagement platform. And we're super excited to be joined this morning by Sun Wei Ling, who's the head of PwC's Academy at PwC Malaysia. Morning, Sun Wei. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. You know what? We have uh, we've broken records uh, with this session with Sunway. We had uh, just under 250, I think, uh, people registering for today's session. And typically, there's about a 60, 70 percent actual turnout rate. So hopefully, we'll see uh, slightly over 100 people joining us. The fact that it is 10:03 a.m. on a Friday morning, and we've already got 108 participants on the call, bodes well for us, Sunway. Um, so, you know, we've, we've started the session bright and early and uh, are off the mark because many of you during the registration process, um, we really appreciate the fact that you made the effort of telling us exactly what you want to gain out of this session. And so we're aiming to ensure that over the next hour, Sunway and I will fill it with insights that are going to address your specific concerns. So we will be on the clock. Um, just to share with you while we wait for the last few laggards to join us. Uh, the themes that we saw coming from the registration uh, sort of um, compilation of questions was people wanting to understand some basics of what it really means to digitally upskill, why companies and individuals should bother grappling with such when we're all so busy with lots already on our plate. And most importantly, everyone's very interested in some real practical uh, tips and best practice ideas that you can literally walk away from session and start implementing for your businesses as well as for you yourselves as professionals as you you know embark on the future of work you know another one of those buzzwords that hopefully will mystify a little bit today same way right so um but first let's spend a few minutes i think so we're introducing ourselves to the audience so they have an a little bit more of an understanding of our backgrounds and the experiences specifically that you bring uh, that we're inviting everybody to really, really leverage on and hopefully benefit from. Anyway, why don't we kick off by maybe telling us a little bit about yourself, your background and the work you do. Thanks, Michelle. Hi, everyone. So my name is Sun Wei and um, I, I hit PwC's Academy uh, and that involves looking after uh, 3,000 um, people within PwC and their learning needs, but also uh, for clients. So increasingly, we see clients uh, in the new world needing new skills. Uh, so that's where we come in with our um, expertise as well to, to help clients. Uh, I'm a business psychologist by background. So that means I can read minds even over... Um, uh, Zoom. <laughs> well, not really. Uh, but uh, I, I like to think of myself as a nutritionist, but rather than for food, uh, it's for the brain. So I, I love putting together a nutrition plan uh, for learning and development. And, and I think uh, why, why I'm sort of talking on this topic is I think over the last two years, we've our, ourselves uh, gone through uh, the journey of upskilling our own people and, and increasingly uh, our clients are asking for the same as well. So happy to, to share the, the blood, sweat, tears and, and uh, the highs and lows. Yes. Absolutely. So, so thank you Sunway, for being willing to do that. Um, we always say, you know, you can learn from the paths of those who have gone before and we're definitely going to want to learn on your and uh, PwC's wealth of experiences. In fact, um, I believe, you know, we've got 124 people logged on early on Friday morning right now. And we believe the significant interest in this topic is largely in part to the audience acknowledgement that PwC generally is at the forefront of all things progressive. Um, and uh, so we're very, very privileged um, that uh, you are actually, PwC, I mean, has actually been a self-driven client um, since 2017, right? Yeah. Um, and and PwC, that's in PwC Malaysia and PwC Vietnam has recently joined the client roster as well over the last year with your flex points. This is a bit of a self blurb here to understand the connection between PwC and self-driven. 
but PwC's uh, FlexPoint system powered by Self-Driven provides a digital platform for uh, PwC team members like Sunway uh, to recognize his colleagues with points and badges based on exemplary contributions and then allowing everybody to literally redeem digital lifestyle vouchers from popular vendors like Grab and Lazada, uh, Zara, uh, Adidas, et cetera, et cetera, of their choice with a point that hopefully a certain way has been giving up left, right, and center because there must be so many PwC colleagues deserving of such recognition. So, so recently uh, a, a colleague shared a, a digital sharing, something that they've learned during a, a team meeting and I gave them a flex point. So there you Wonderful. go. Wonderful. <laughs> True advocate. Thank you very much. That's, that's sort of applying um, in, in the flow of work right now. So, so for the benefit of audience members who are unfamiliar with self driven and wonder what is our positioning in this space of digital upskilling, uh, just to do you justice and prevent you from mistaking us for being either a training provider or a, which we are not very pretty, uh, and or a learning management system provider, which again, we are not. Um, but uh, having said that, we have had instances where clients of ours with learning management systems have used our platform as a gateway of sorts to motivate uh, their users, their employees towards uh, user adoption and making sure that those HR systems like LMSs don't suffer the fate of white elephants that are heavily invested and then nobody ends up using them because they can't figure out how to find the platform or you know, log on. Um, and, and so for the benefit of those who, who don't know who we are, here's a minute and a half video uh, on just what we do, so you can kind of place us in your minds. Priya, would you mind doing the honors? Sure. So that uh, little video was the essence of self-driven as an employee experience tech platform, giving managers the tools to manage remote workforces. And since uh, our colleagues at PwC Malaysia and Vietnam have joined us in the last three years, we've evolved to address other critical needs in the talent uh, development and optimization space, specifically helping them to really motivate people to want to upscale and rescale uh, for the uh, digital age in the flow of work. But enough about us, let's cut to the chase with what all of you are here for. Sunway, to start, how, how do you actually define upskilling? How does it, how does it differ from uh, reskilling? And, and, and are both just really fancy HR words that we created to make people's lives even diff more difficult? Um, you know, placements for training and learning and development. What is upskilling and why should companies and individuals care? So I, I, that, that term is interesting because I think a lot of people use it uh, interchangeably. Right. And uh, in, in budget 2021, I noticed it was called reskilling and upskilling, right? So even on the national level. So, so how, how we, we like to think of it is upskilling tends to be uh, for the longer term. 
mm-hmm. uh, and it starts off with um, thinking about future future needs and and then having a plan in order how to meet it right so that's uh, upskilling reskilling tends to be um, a shorter term initiative for example if someone's job is being affected you want to reskill them into a different role uh, but the, it tends to be used in 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 a, a, a shorter term context so when you have an upskilling strategy it might involve reskilling some functions right. uh, so that's how we like to 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 think of it the and and distinction that I, I the interesting distinction that i came across i think in a pwc article was the fact that when to fully upskill, it's not just enough to uh, equip the person with new skills, but you literally have to ensure there is a job um, uh, that is relevant for the future, that matches uh, their capabilities, their new capabilities. So yeah, yeah, things. yeah. And so, and, and often upskilling can happen on a company level, a societal level, or, or even you know the whole country. So, so that's often how how it's often used. And the important part, I guess, is not. Uh, the training, which I, I think a lot of us from the L and D space, you know, that that was our measurement in the past. You know, how many people we could get on, how much did we run? But upskilling has an element of okay, can they actually perform the new role that is required? Uh, and and I think you you made a, a point about you know, are we uh, is is a new term trying to make people's lives a bit more difficult? Uh, and I was sort of uh, reflecting on. Uh, uh, some something someone said to me that you know the day of uh, having a single degree and it lasting your whole life or your whole career is long gone, long, long, long gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and I think that's the the challenge that organizations and and society faces now, right? That because of disruption, uh, the half life of skills, meaning uh, how long a, a skill is effective, uh, is only five years or two and a half years. So the need to reskill and upskill has become uh, 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 imperative for organizations and hence, you know, I guess the interest in this topic and uh, a lot of discussions around digital and human skills and what is what is needed to be done. Absolutely. And I, I, I'm glad you brought up that uh, that uh, issue of the half-life of skills, um, Senway, because some of the questions that people posed um, as part of the registration and, and, and indeed when you talk to people, particularly those uh, who profess to be less tech savvy, they end up being very uh, worried that they're going to get left behind, that, you know, all these young chikus with the digital digital skills are going to overtake them and already, they're already contending with the robots, you know, so what is what is left for us baby boomers to be able to stay relevant? And I think the point that you make about the half-life of skills is so pertinent because if you think about the fact that even a graduate coming into the market um, two and a half years ago, um, literally, if he or she did not do anything to upskill themselves, rescale themselves in any way, they would be on par with someone who did nothing. Exactly, is essentially what you're saying, right? Or, or half yeah. of what they learned would be would be meaningless. And so, what that speaks to the rest of us, um, tech savvy or not, is as long as you apply yourself, you stand a chance. I think that's the message we want to say say today. You stand a chance as long as you put the effort into it. Which yeah, and I and I think and, and I think often uh, it can be seen as a negative that you know I've, I've got all this experience and now I have to relearn and learn. But I, I like to think of it that actually it's quite exciting because you get to you know reinvent yourself or try something new or do something different uh, every few years. You know you're gonna have to continually uh, um, reskill yourself. And one uh, analogy which uh, I think is quite useful is. Uh, because technology is going at such a fast pace, so it feels like you're accelerating in a car. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so when you're accelerating in a car, if you, if you think about it, you're actually not very comfortable because you're still going at speed, you're at attention. And, and once you level off, let's say you're driving at 100, you, you, get, you feel a bit more comfortable. Uh, but we're in a stage where it's constant acceleration. So I think an acceptance that, you know, that is a reality of, of the age we live in where things are moving very fast and it's not, you know, uh, uh, going to move so fast that we can't catch up, but it does mean that we need to get used to this feeling of we're going to have to keep learning and relearning and being a beginner once again. Absolutely. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to spin off your, your car analogy because, um, you know, one of the one of the one of the things that I think people prevents people from really getting on and getting on with it is you don't know where to start, and uh, it it just seems like 
all the design thinking, agile, all the, you know, the, the smart sounding topics, you can't, you don't know how it's actually going to apply in, in your daily life. And so for me, if I take an example, personal anecdote, when I was in university uh, about to get a car, I thought it would be prudent to learn how to fix a tire because that seemed like a skill that would come in handy right? You know, it's a, it's a should have skill. Um, and then, you know, the university was also offering belly dancing classes and that seemed more fun. <laughs> so like <laughs> tire fixing, belly dancing, tire fixing, belly dancing. And I picked belly dancing because, you know, that's just human nature. Uh, but had I been at the side of the road with a flat tire um, now, I literally would obviously be YouTubing how to fix a flat tire. And I think that's a very crucial aspect of digital upskilling. It's got to be relevant to fixing the problems of now so that people will be incentivized to really do it um, rather than just thinking, you know, uh, it's, a, it's nutritious because Sunway said so and companies like PwC said so it's nutritious, but really do I want to eat it? Because, you know, Doritos are much more satisfying. But, you know, uh, I'm sure you've, you've learned a lot in your, in your journey at PwC and that's what people are here to learn. So um, Sunway, take it away. What, what have you learned about digital upskilling leading the charge at PwC's academy? Yeah, so I, I uh, being a true PwC person, I've uh, I have some slides. <laughs> so, yes, so so uh, I and and I think I want to take some time just to share our, our own story, um, on and, and what we did. Um, so yeah, yeah. So um, so this I, I want to 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 bring you back a bit, I guess, before we even go into digital upskilling. Uh, I, I want to take three concepts that uh, we're very familiar with in our day-to-day -day lives. And, and it's going to be a bit obvious, but I, I am trying to drive home a point on what upskilling is before we even start thinking about uh, digital upskilling. And, and it might give you some insight into our approach. So the first is a picture. Uh, and that picture um, is of a wedding uh, or a marriage. And I often ask people, which is more important? And um, that, that is the right answer. And, and of course, it's the marriage is important. Although I think if I tell my wife, you know, the wedding wasn't important, I'll, I'll get killed. Uh, but if, if you think about it, it is, right? The event is the wedding. Um, but the marriage, the, the, the journey is, is the more important thing. So that's the first thing to, to remember, right? In upskilling, uh, treat it like uh, marriage. Okay, second, um, when we think about our approach, how do we actually go about upskilling usually? So I, I like to use the analogy of planting seeds. So there's one way to do it, which is you take a bucket full of seeds, you walk into a field, you turn left, you throw it here, you turn right, you throw it there go home and rest and come back a week later and hope something happens. But there's an alternative approach, which is you know, looking at the soil conditions, creating the right environment, uh, checking the temperature, making sure you've got the right seed for the soil, planting the seed at the optimum time, and then harvesting it, right? Um, and, and obviously, I'm trying to drive to the point that uh, one approach, if you're talking, especially when it comes to organizations, when you're trying to do things at scale, is more effective than the other. And the, the third picture is of uh, a classroom, right? So when does upskilling actually happen? And I think Michelle uh, mentioned that point earlier, right? Is it at the point of when you're sitting in the classroom or is it at the point where you're you know, learning to ride a bike? And many things are better experienced and done on the job um, than uh, lectured, right? So um, that if you could click again, uh, all three, yeah. So I guess the, the question uh, that we always kind of challenge and remind ourselves every time we're, we're going too heavy into a, a, the next big event is, you know, where are we spending our time? Is it on the nice, big, fancy wedding or is it on the marriage and, and the journey matters? Uh, the second is, uh, what do our upskilling programs look like? Is it a, a, a workshop here, you know, a event here, thrown in left, right, and then sort of you go home and hope something comes up the next year? Or does it require something more? And I guess, you know, I am trying to say it does require something more. Um, and ultimately, you know, how, how are we designing for performance? Because that matters. Ultimately, uh, in the organization setting, it's 
about delivering value to the work. And I think that's why we're here and that's why we do what we do. So with that as a, a background, I guess, uh, I wanted to share a bit about our uh, approach. And when we first started off, I, if, if I fellow, I saw some fellow uh, L&D practitioners here, uh, there was a lot of noise and I'm talking a lot of noise. Uh, you know, someone would go for a conference, um, you know, someone would watch a video, someone would see a demo, uh, and there was just so many requests, like, um, and, and this is just a snapshot of some of, you know, the topics, the tools the, uh, 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 that were being asked of us to, hey, I, I think, you know, we should run a, a workshop on this, right? And, and what we realized very quickly was that if we filled up the whole training calendar full of these events, um, what, what was going to happen? Uh, and, and we took a step back to say, okay, what did we really want to, to achieve? Uh, and actually it was quite simple. We wanted to be able to use technology to reduce cost. We wanted to use technology and digital to uh, improve value to clients, you know, a hundred page document, could it be a dashboard? Could it be a new uh, digital product that could add value to them? And, and finally, we wanted to future-proof our workforce. Our workforce traditionally in PwC, uh, we have specialists. So we would have an AI specialist, we would have a data specialist, we would have a robotic specialist. Uh, but as advisors, increasingly, we need everyone to, to up their game in digital because you can't have a, a conversation even around your technical areas without recognizing the role that digital plays. So that was the kind of uh, uh, challenge we face. How do we achieve this? So uh, next slide. Just to, just to stop um, right there, um, Senwe, yeah. I thought it was very good. Um, Priya, do you mind if back on that slide, one slide? This, what we really want, I think it's a really pertinent point to kind of emphasize uh, the, the, the aim of any digital upskilling and indeed any transformation really lies in these three points you've highlighted, Senway. Uh, the, the impact to the bottom line is it will help reduce costs. It will increase value to clients. If you can improve the customer experience, you're going to get a bigger share of the market. You're going to increase your revenues and that affects your bottom line as well. And obviously, future-proofing your workforce um, is all about preparing your workforce to, to keep um, hitting the bottom line in the future. So I know you know, it's uh, l and we like to talk in these, uh, you know, uh, altruistic terms of learning for learning's sake. But for those who are business driven out there, it absolutely, absolutely impacts your bottom line. So thank you for highlighting these three, Sunway. Please carry on. All right. Thanks, Michelle. So we, we then kind of at looking at those, what we wanted to achieve uh, and that whole point of if we filled up our training calendar, would it actually help us achieve? And I guess uh, uh, the message is that it's just, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There was just so much other things that needed to be put in place uh, in order for upskilling to be effective. And, and, and I hope not to overwhelm you, but then to in the next few slides to be able to show you what are some practical steps uh, that you can start to take uh, in order to do this. But remember upskilling uh, is something that goes beyond the actual uh, training itself. Okay, so next slide. So here's, um, I, I tried to break down a bit what we did into three um, uh, pain points uh, that we had. The first was that, as I mentioned, we had traditionally had very specialized technical experts digital experts, but we needed to create organizational wide awareness. We needed to uplift the entire organization. Um, and so we had a number of initiatives around that, right? And, I, and I'll, I'll have a slide later to, to talk around that. So this was really, you, you can imagine it. it's the events, it's the, you know, uh, the apps, um, the comms, which is, I, I cannot under uh, emphasize how important uh, communicating this is. Um, it's the leadership support, it's the emails that go out. So this was really trying to get the excitement going and, and, and uh, organizational wide awareness that, hey, this is important in PwC. I'm seeing a lot of activity in this area. Uh, but the, the second piece, which was very important to us was actually we needed to create early use cases because there's a point in which you've made everyone aware, they're great, you're getting all these emails on blockchain, you're having a talk here, a talk there, uh, but people want to see, okay, so yeah, so how is it going to actually uh, impact uh, us? 
And so we had also a, a, a big focus on creating early use cases and pain points because we wanted team members to uh, be able to feel what uh, digital could do for them. Um, and, and just to give you an example, within my team, we had someone uh, focus on uh, robotics process automation, RPA. Um, and uh, so, so he went through the training for that. And then he started to find problems within the team uh, that he could solve. And when he did that demonstration in the team, I can tell you the I could have stood there and told everyone that we need digital, we need digital, but that one demo uh, changed more in the mindset of, of, of our people, or of my team, than me telling them about it. So, so that was another piece of our efforts in, in how do we start all these different teams uh, creating early use cases. And then the final piece, which was very important for us, was how do we create change agents? How do we get people within the organization who uh, are influencers, have interest in this area, and equip them even more to go out and make change, even beyond uh, their team? So we kind of broke it down into uh, these three steps. Um, and, and maybe I'll walk you through some examples of, of each. So next slide. So this, uh, some examples of what we did, there's obviously the events and after COVID, there's no events. So everything was done virtually, but you, you know, you can create a virtual event, which is very compelling as well, using gamification, et cetera. Uh, so we've done it, I think, uh, even with the self-driven platform, you can do that. Uh, and, and we also had a digital fitness uh, app, which currently actually a bit of a promo is, is free. So you can go, go ahead and use that. Um, and, and what it did was that it got everyone to do a, a digital fitness assessment and then you choose your fitness plan uh, and then you can do your workout <laughs> to try and uh, get you your score uh, better. So we wrote that out across the organization. Um, but I, I think it's also important to note that just one thing, you know, by itself is not, it's never going to be the magic bullet. So it's really in all the things being combined uh, that, that we saw uh, some of the, the benefits. So, that's organizational wide awareness, right? The comms, the events, the, the app, getting people excited uh, about, about this, okay? So the next one is huh, creating use cases, right? So for that, we, we really focused in on digital academies. Uh, so when we looked at our organization, we deal with a lot of data. So data was a big uh, a win for us. We crunch numbers, we do due diligences, we look at audit numbers, we do a lot of manual reconciliation, all that uh, fun stuff, right? A lot of numbers, a lot of data. So we wanted people to really understand, you know, are there ways to wrangle, to massage this data more effectively? Are there ways to present it and to integrate it in a more meaningful uh, manner? So that was, uh, we, we ran digital academies across the organization. Uh, and we really targeted around, you know, the data uh, wrangling, which is the massaging of data, uh, data visualization, which is, you know, how do you then present it back? How do you kind of tell that story with the data? Uh, and also uh, RPA, which is robotics process automation, which is a layer that sits on top uh, of that. And importantly, we, we, what we wanted to do is for people to bring their use cases. And so this whole idea of getting people to come in, find a use case, do a bit of a sprint with some, with some hand-holding and then be able to go back to their uh, uh, teams to show and, and actually improve the on-the-job experience. So that was a very important piece we wanted to achieve. Right? Uh, the next slide. And, and I think the, the big one we, we really uh, focused on, and, and actually this, this took quite a, a bit of effort because uh, it is taking a group of people and, and trying to completely uh, re, rewire them, I guess, uh, to be change agents. Uh, so what we did was, uh, so traditionally PwC um, tends to approach innovation at the, from the business level, right? So we have a big bet, we have a strategy, uh, we have investments, this is what we're gonna do, who's on board, right? Um, but when we realized uh, we needed to upskill the whole organization. Uh, the approach we took was also to marry that with a citizen-led approach. So what, did, what does that mean? Um, it literally meant sending out a note to the entire organization and saying, hey, we, we're doing this thing. It's going to be one year long. Uh, we want to look for change agents. 
um, we apply and we gave them five or six questions, very simple of what, why do you think digital is important? Uh, what do you want to do? What is your digital fitness score? But it actually didn't really matter what their score was. We just asked them, are you willing to improve it and get to a certain number? Um, and, and based on that, we were actually very surprised because we got quite a lot of uh, applications and we then ended up selecting the initial group of uh, over 100 and then bringing them through uh, a kind of process and training and, and protecting their time uh, and having uh, business leaders support them um, uh, to create change, right? So we're in our second year of this uh, now and, and I think this one has been uh, one of our initiatives that has created a lot of impact because part of their role uh, actually involves going out and knocking on people's doors and saying, hey, what's your problem? What, what's an issue I can solve? And, you know, isn't that, you know, the dream, right? Someone coming to your team and saying, hey, what's your pain point? Uh, you know, well, what's the manual work that you do? Is there something I can help with? Um, so, so we've built that in. Some way, is, um, uh, can you give us an example of um, something that perhaps the audience can really sink their teeth into in terms of uh, a, a, a citizen, uh, ch ch what, what do you call them? The digital accelerators, the program. Yeah, digital accelerators, yeah. So the change agent knocked on one particular door in PwC, asked that question, what, what problem can I solve for you? And, and hopefully did solve a problem of some kind. Would you be able to share an example? Yeah, so it, if you go to the, I think there's two slides down. Let me just talk through that one and then I can give another one. Sure, sir. Oh, okay, yeah, this one, yeah, this one, yeah. So, um, so this this one practical example. So um, in, in our uh, audit process um, and in, in, in doing assurance, uh, there's this process step called, you know, checking journal entries for completeness. You know, have all the journal entries been, been, been put in properly? Um, so these two digital accelerators work together to put together a workflow uh, to automate that, all right? It saved a, uh, a lot of time uh, from two days. Now it, you know, using, using uh, different tools, it takes, you know, a, a few minutes. Uh, they then put it on the digital lab uh, and then they, uh, people can download it. So I'll come to the digital lab bit uh, a bit different, but, but what uh, these two uh, individuals then did uh, is then go to teams with a similar uh, within their within their industry to then have conversations around you know actually we uh, automated this step you know, yours has slightly different data inputs can we help you with this let's show you how it's done amazing um, and then you know and so on so and so forth and and where the 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 structure, structural bit comes in. Um, it's this in this whole idea of uh, three one one, um, and this is something we implemented uh, in this year's digital accelerator uh, after learning from the first year, which is three days of your normal work, uh, one day of learning, uh, because this year we've we've sort of identified certain specializations and nano degrees we wanted them to do. Uh, and then one day of community time. So community time is that time of this going out. So it could look like, hey, I'm a digital accelerator. So I will run a digital academy or I'm a digital accelerator and I'm going to go out to teams and ask them what their, their problems are and try to solve it. So that right, is so, enforced. Is that an enforced sort of obligation uh, that uh, that time away from BAU business as usual work um, in a week is allocated towards this focus, going out and maybe seeing what else is happening and or offering proactively your help to other parts of the organization that's built yes. in their responsibility? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's highly encouraged and it's agreed at the levels. Obviously, there are some weeks where, you know, they get caught up with other things, but largely uh, that is the approach, but we don't penalize someone, for example, if, you know, they miss a week or two. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. And, and one of the, the parts here, which uh, it talks about digital lab, uh, is, is an issue that will come up as organizations uh, start to uh, run digital upskilling at scale, which is there's someone in finance creating a great workflow. And then there's someone in operations creating the exact same workflow or the same idea. And then there's someone in you know, uh, the HR team who might be working on the same thing. And so, so what you start to see is that that's great. You got everyone excited, but then there's also this aspect of 
uh, oh, now there's a bit of duplicates going on. And part of it is great because you want the better duplicate to, to do well. Uh, but that's where this whole idea of uh, the digital lab came in. Uh, and, and is creating a place to share so that people could upload their, digit, their workflows and scripts and people can actually search on, on the platform first before they uh, go about and uh, uh, try to create something new, whether it already exists. And then they can do a few things. They can go ahead and create something new because they feel they've looked at this one and it's not as good. They can talk to the person and collaborate um, um, and, and, and work with them, which is, which is what usually happens. Yeah. That's really wonderful. And I know, I'm sure based on what you've um, discussed so far, so way, there's going to be lots of trigger questions in people's minds. So I just want to invite the audience to, if you have a question um, specifically for Senway, anything that he's discussed, uh, please feel free to type it in the chat. Uh, we'll be checking in occasionally to just uh, make sure that, you know, there's, if there's a question that should be answered, um, we'll answer it right now rather than wait to the, the final quarter of the hour where we will be addressing some questions. Please carry on, Senway. Yeah. So where we started about two years ago, um, and we're now in our second batch of our second year of what we call future skills and, and, the, and the digital accelerator program. Um, and, and what we also wanted to do was to be a lot more intentional in tracking the return on investment, um, which has always been an ask of L and D, right? So, what, you know, what's the return on investment, and you know how much time is saved, etc. Um, uh, so. We did a, a before, mid, and after you know checkpoints to, to see how they're doing, um, but we also did a, a lot of work around uh, social return on investment, uh, which aims to kind of quantify certain improvements according to the outcomes we wanted. So you'll notice we had future proof, uh, cost savings, and increased value. Cost savings, increased value, easier, right? You can literally say, okay, you save this much time, you quantify it. But future proof, what does that actually mean, right? Like how, how so we kind of defined it in a few different ways in terms of confidence uh, in, in using digital products, confidence in being able to share this with your team uh, and, and with clients. Um, and then there's a, there's a whole kind of methodology to kind of uh, uh, measure that. Uh, so we're actually quite pleased because the, the, the feedback that we got and the social return measurement was, was it, it's worth the money when we when you think intentionally to digitally upskill uh, your people. Um, but I, I also put a video there just to give you an idea of uh, some of the, the people within our organizations and the type of uh, innovations and uh, time savings that they that they got. We actually ran this for Malaysia and Vietnam, so you'll see half of the people there being uh, Vietnamese. So Senway, that that initial question: Are agents incentivized, rewarded, and recognized? Yeah, so the, I, I guess the short answer is yes. Um, uh, the longer answer is, you know, we've, we have spent a bit of time thinking of, uh, time thinking about uh, motivating. So how, how do you actually motivate people to learn uh, digital skills? Um, and, and motivation in general, there's, there's two types, right? There's the internal or intrinsic motivation or external or what they call extrinsic so internal you know you're naturally curious you're motivated motivated anyway so if you love reading you're motivated to read books right uh, but if you're being paid to read a book you're being externally motivated right uh, so what what we we noticed was that within an organization when it comes to 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 digital skills or frankly for for most things uh, people are motivated in different ways. Uh, there are people who are motivated intrinsically, and that's the group we actually tried to capture with this digital accelerators. Uh, we, we sent out an invite, they applied. We said it was difficult, they still applied. Um, you know, we gave them time and many of them had to do it, you know, on top of their day-to-day their, their -day work, even though we protected some of the time. So we really wanted to capture in the early wave when it comes to change agents, we found it was very important to capture those who really wanted to do it rather than people who were, who were uh, kind of, you know, I'll give you a, a bigger bonus if, if, you, if you do this or we'll, we'll give you uh, a recognition or reward, right? So that's one. So we really tried to capture intrinsically. Uh, but there are also people who are motivated extrinsically so that, you know, it could be numbers, uh, as, in, as in financial, it could be status, which is actually a very powerful uh, motivator. 
Um, and so we, we try to blend that in as well uh, in terms of the platform that we use, you know, even the announcement of who was a digital accelerator was sent out by the managing partner. Everyone got to saw there's a website where you can go in and say, who is the digital accelerator, my team, there's kind of newsletters that go out highlighting the, uh, so it's very high profile uh, kind of uh, initiative. So it, you got the sense that if you were a digital accelerator, it meant something you're being talked about. Uh, so that was the, the uh, extrinsic. Uh, and and we also know some people are motivated, you know, by the status quo, right? So we did a bit of research on that. Uh, but the good news is actually all groups are willing to upskill. It's just in maybe in different amounts, they need slightly different methods to, to get them uh, to do it. So yeah, long answer to say for digital accelerators, we really wanted to capture uh, those who were intrinsically, who were really gung-ho about it, because that's the kind of energy you need uh, to, to create the change and build the excitement within the organization. Absolutely. And so uh, we have another question um, uh, from Jason. You know, how do we introduce all of this to organizations that are, you know, you talked about the digital accelerators. They are innately passionate. They're, they're, they're ready. But uh, there's a lot of uh, people and organizations out there that are, um, as Jason says, afraid of change um, and digital thingies to them are deemed a daunting and irrelevant. Um, and you know, it's, perhaps you can share some, some, some insight about that. On our end, I, I, if I can just, uh, while, while Sen Wei you know, gathers his thoughts about uh, some of the things he can share on the perspective. Um, one of our clients, very interesting, I was speaking to them. They had introduced a new learning management system um, in their organization and were able with our help to get 82% adoption of that new management system in uh, 20 days. And that is without a learning KPI. And those of you in HR and learning and development would understand how big a deal that is because normally when you introduce a buffet of learning anywhere, it's very hard to get people to sit down and eat the buffet because work just always takes a precedence. And um, really, um, I know some of you are really thinking, you know, how do we start as small? Um, and, and one of the things that they did um, using our platform was to really just get people to do the small little things like log on to the new LMS, um, which was attached to our, our system, a self-driven, and create your profile. So they get points for just even creating their online profile got points for even signing on to specific channels of learning, whether um, it is about data analysis uh, as one branch of learning um, or uh, AI as another branch of learning. And so those small little bite-sized steps of getting onto the digital bandwagon uh, was one way to help people get comfortable um, with, with immersing themselves. Um, in your experience, Senwe, what, what has helped to uh, to, to, to get people started if they're not already in the, in the mindset, progressive mindset of a PwC, of a PwC digital accelerator? So I, I remember uh, the, one of the first change projects I was involved in a long time, not, not digital upskilling, but the, another one. And I remember going to a stakeholder and telling them all the things they need to, to change. Uh, and, uh, and he said to me, you're always telling me that we need to change, but you're not helping me see and feel first. <laughs> so that always stuck with me. It was one of the first projects I was involved in. Um, and, and it really kind of resonated with me because oftentimes we, we might have an initiative and we're kind of saying, you have to change, you have to change, you know, change coming. But we're not helping um, uh, the organization see what is the possibilities and also feel, I think that that emotional part is quite important. Um, uh, so I, I think we, we try to do a lot of the see and feel, you know, I mean, some very sim simple ways in which we've done it is actually, there was, <laughs> there was once where we got in some kids uh, to, to present what they do digitally to our uh, uh, partners and directors and, and senior managers. And I can tell you that was a, it was better than, you know, getting in an AI expert. It was literally 12 year olds telling what they do in their spare time, going to a coding class, the apps that they've built and doing a demo of it. And then us asking them advice, uh, uh, what, 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 you know, uh, the TWC can do. Uh, and they said, you know, I think you can do it too. If I can do it, you can. So, so it was, it was, it was, it was really in creating those moments, you know, even in, you know, whether it's the demos, whether it's, you know, you know, examples like this or, or getting a, uh, you know, a particular unit or a team or an individual who has done something 
to share their story, to show a demo that really got uh, uh, people excited, we found. Absolutely. And yeah. just to yeah. clarify, I'm, I'm assuming these 12 year olds were not geniuses, right? They're not Harvard bound. They were in your bog standard, uh, uh, obviously fairly urbane 12 year olds with access to some level of uh, internet technology, but they were your standard 12 year olds, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I saw Salika's comment there, yeah, because someone asked like, oh, what kind of, uh, how do you uh, upskill yourself? Uh, yeah, so I get the assignment, uh, and if I can't answer it, I go on Google. And then if I go to my uh, the the teacher, they said go to Google and try again. <laughs> so, <laughs> and and you know it really kind of hit home this whole idea of if this is the next generation, great one, we need to hire them. But also, you know, we better get comfortable with technology because you know that this is the new norm. And they can do it. So if a twelve-year-old mental uh, capability, intellectual capacity can you know, the rest of us, again, that message of if you are willing, you can. Um, and I love the point that you're talking about, you know, leveraging on the, the knowledge that is already within the organization. Another tip that um, I learned from one of our clients was that they would get, this was a software development uh, client, and what they would do is get their uh, subject matter experts on coding would act to actually record, maybe on their phones, um, hacks, um, hacks that would, you know, about how to code faster or better or whatever. And they found that this as a learning content module was the most downloaded and most consumed in their learning management system. So again, it's that aspect of really um, getting things that people will want to utilize in the flow of work. It really makes sense and helps them in their day to day. Um, and and, and I'm, I'm guessing that's exactly what uh, the things that you've seen work at, at PwC and other organizations too, Senway. Yeah, I, I'm a big proponent of finding the bright spots within the organization because uh, in, in terms of culture change you know somewhere within your organization in spite of its current culture a team and or an individual is doing something differently and it's really an understanding how is this person doing it differently within the existing structure systems mindsets that you find a lot of gems and you know a number of our change most successful change approaches was identifying those people and then say okay what's different it could have just been a conversation with their direct manager and a goal given to them you know it could be something else right so but what is it within the organization and then how do you replicate it yeah. i'm seeing a lot of uh, um questions and, and, and this was a concern raised earlier on with Sunway about the, the fact that digital upskilling or the, the thought, the misconception that digital upskilling is only for the new generation and that, you know, those of the baby boom generation, um, less tech savvy, so whatever the case, it's not, it's not for them. Um, I would I would challenge that by saying, and I'll give a specific example, our CEO Self Driven is, is the oldest in the organization and he puts the millennials to shame. He literally introduced to the rest of us, I mean, okay, I'm gonna put myself in the young group, right? Even though I am, whatever. Um, he introduced to the rest of us uh, digital apps like um, Grammarly uh, that help you write better and uh, Lumen, which help you create explainer videos um, you know, automatically using using AI, you type in something of a, a paragraph, and and this app will help you create and explain a video based on your on your text. Um, and and the ba the benefit to you as a sixty year old, fifty year old CEO is you no longer then have to fork out twenty thousand ringgit uh, to have a digital agency create a you know one minute explainer video. You can basically pay for a subscription to Lumen and, and, and do that. And so there are very real benefits to be had for someone who is not a new generation to just learn to use some of the consumer digital apps out there. And in fact, going back to PwC, I, I myself downloaded your digital fitness app and I found it a, a great start to kind of understand my benchmark. I think my score is 260 so far. Um, what's your full, well, the full score is 300 something or 400. So obviously I have a way to go. 420. Yeah. 420. Okay. So obviously I'm like below passing mark, but, <laughs> or just about, <laughs> uh, but it's a great, it's a great tool to kind of establish your, you know, place where you are at the start and then yeah. get recommendations for what to do next. Right. Same way. Yeah. With the, we, at, at the start of our journey, the senior leadership. So, uh, uh with kind of a partnership organization, so partners and directors, uh, all committed to getting a score of 300. Um, and, and as we were talking about that, uh, I, I kind of remember, reminded everyone, the way the digital fitness app is built 
is you can't cram your digital fitness to meet your goal at the end of the year in the last week. Uh, just like a workout, right? You can't do a whole week's worth of workout and, and get fit. So the system literally does not allow it you to unless somehow you change the calendar settings. I'm not sure whether you could actually hack it, uh, but I guess the whole point was that you needed to do it weekly and get small increments in, in, in knowledge. And, and digital fitness is about knowledge and awareness, uh, like you said. Um, and then and then it helps you get your score at the end. So that kind of also helped our uh, senior people uh, uh, have a bit more of a consistent habit. I think it, it came along with a number of other initiatives, but it was a nice uh, start, especially to, to broaden their knowledge. Uh, and I think when it comes to senior, uh, to people who've been in their role for really long or more experienced or a very high level, I think the challenge always is that you have a lot of experience and you've actually been rewarded for your experience. And, and in many sense, you are uh, disincentivized to being a beginner again. And that's what it can feel like uh, to take something up and not be good and have a junior person much better than you. <laughs> uh, and so whenever we do surveys, it's often, you know, it, that there is a tendency for younger people to say, yeah, I'm willing to learn. And then although I say, yeah, you know, I might touch it, touch it a bit. But you're right in the sense that there, there are different groups, right? There are people who are always going to be motivated, whatever the age. And I think that's uh, one way to start is to kind of find that group within the senior, uh, senior levels and get them excited so that they can influence. I think the other aspect is that we, we, when we talk to our leaders, we, we, we let them know that um, based on their experience, based on their scope, based on what they do, technically, actually, I mean, this is more maybe in the three-year horizon, you don't actually need digital. You could probably do a pretty good job based on your relationship skills, based on what you're doing, and still get by, be very effective and productive. But if you are trying, if you are aligned with our purpose of trying to do this for the entire organization, if you're aligned to our purpose of being the future of our firm, being able to advise clients holistically, then your role modeling is going to be very important. And I think that's the the thing that sometimes um, if, if someone's very senior, they miss, they, they can do a great job, but it, it, there's nothing that beats you saying, I've also done this and, and encouraging a junior person to be able to do it. Absolutely. And I think there was, um, I, I, I lifted this, um, um, this sentence, I think, from a, a PwC interview with The Edge. Um, where you talk about it's not that everybody needs to learn to code necessarily, but you but as a business leader, you need to understand um, the technology so that you are um, able to inspire and empower others to want to take on the challenge of that continuous learning and also make good decisions around the use of such technology. So, you know, you don't have to uh, master uh, Python or, or the, the C, -shell, C, C++, whatever uh, programming language is du jour right now, um, but really making sure that you stay uh, on top of things. And there are uh, there are multitude channels for you to do that, right? Um, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to describe for us. Anyway. I know that we are, you know, we've, we've gone so engrossed into the conversation. Um, we have about four minutes to 11 where we we, we, we kept people's time. If, if people are happy to stay on for um, a few minutes post, Senwe, what would you like to highlight in the remaining um, time that we have, perhaps from your slide, knowing the, the concerns of the, the audience, which uh, was shared with you earlier, what, what do you think would be most valuable to share with them in the last few minutes that we have? Okay, I, I think maybe one point from this slide is that very quickly in your digitally ups digital upskilling journey, it's going to go beyond L&D. Uh, uh, licenses, uh, what do you do with the assets that you've built, platforms to host them, uh, policies that might need to change if you're holding clients' data, right? Uh, things that you probably might not even have, have uh, thought about in the past. How do you share this knowledge? And, and so I think digitally ups, digital upskilling has to be an initiative that, uh, you know, it can start off it, at whatever pocket it might start off in in your organization. Everyone's different. But it, it needs close collaboration, not just between L&D, but within the HR, with IT, and, and ultimately with, with the business strategy. And that becomes apparent quite quickly, I think. I would say one year into your journey, you'll start to see a lot of these uh, um, uh, synergies that need to happen uh, fairly quickly. 
Um, and I think maybe in the on the last slide, I think the some questions I would say that would help the an, an organization think through um, how to start, right? So when it comes to it, I think it's really important to know, you know, um, what are you trying to achieve, right? Is it organizational wide awareness at this stage? That's fine. So that's that's the focus. And I think it's important in that conversation to also manage expectations, right? Because sometimes people think organizational wide awareness equates change agents. And, and so being able to articulate uh, the difference is important. Uh, the second is, you know, really identifying what you want people to do differently. So for us, we wanted them to be advisors to, we, we had the experts, <laughs> we wanted everyone else to kind of have use cases, be able to improve their work, but find, find uh, new ways to add value to clients. So that was important to us. And, uh, and, and you need to figure out for your organization what that looks like. Um, um, the, the number three is sort of a similar point to that, right? Um, and, and I think four is, is, you know, who, how many people need it? You know, maybe at the start, you don't really need to start with the everyone. You start with a function that deals a lot with data, deals a lot with manual work and, and create use cases there. Um, and I think for, for uh, five and six, I, I think just very practical questions on, uh, you know, is it an organizational wide approach you might need? Uh, or do you need a specific intervention because a particular team needs to be reskilled and retooled or, or a center of excellence needs to take the work away? Um, and, and I think then, then it's also having that conversation around upskilling can uh, be expensive, it can be cheap. Uh, they both have different outcomes, right? Uh, uh, so you need to also know and have a think around, okay, how much are we going to invest? Because that also determines uh, the level and the effort. And it's not just money, it's also time and, and resource. So staffing uh, uh, to be able to, to deliver that. So uh, hopefully, you know, you take a screenshot or I'm sure the slides will go out to some questions to just uh, reflect on. And, you know, you can always get in touch if you, if you want to have a, a discussion, further discussion around those questions. Absolutely. I really appreciate that. So when I know we, we, we missed a couple of questions, but I just want to touch on them briefly. One of them was about how do we get everybody in the organization aligned, um, you know, when the process flows and the changes, et cetera, and that, that mindset shift. Uh, not everybody's going to come to the finish line at the same time. And I think um, in answer to that, I would just refer back to Sunway's initial picture of the wedding versus the marriage where, you know, you, the, the wedding is a one-off event that you can kind of control to some level. Uh, but the marriage is an ongoing journey that you're going to have to make compromises and continue to make effort and not both partners are not going to be in the same place at the same time all the time. Uh, and, yeah. and so it is that ongoing journey. And I think that also answers that question uh, ans asked by, uh, you know, is it, is it uh, just before Zaki um, Vincent about having people stay engaged beyond just having a carrot? Ultimately, what I'm, I'm taking away from your sharing, Sunway, with, with PwC's experience is that if you um, apply the classic change management theories, of, um, of, of making aware the, the, the urgency of um, digital upskilling, that's, that's foremost. And then, um, you know, creating use cases that actually matter to them on the job and amplifying them in some way uh, and, and award, rewarding and, and um, making visible the, the early adopters um, and, and the successes and how their lives have been made better um, by the fact that they've made the effort to digitally upskill, then you are well on your way to nurturing exactly the kind of um, the dynamics and the learning culture that uh, will help um, plant the seeds to your point. Um, for yeah, ab absolutely. And, and I think sort of, I, I didn't really emphasize on this, but, but one of the, the underlying pieces I think for us was in fostering learning agility. Because honestly, in five years time, the, the tool and technology landscape will change. And so the, for us, it was really around uh, also getting the organization used to this idea of learning, relearning. There's going to be something new the next time. There's going to be something new. Uh, um, uh, and that's been in, uh, a big focus for us as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So we know we've gone past the hour. Thank you so much to everybody who has um, taken the time on Friday to join us. I hope that uh, session was insightful for you all. Um, and I'm sure there'll be many questions uh, coming across our way and you know where to reach Senway, he's on LinkedIn, as am I. 
I think from the type of questioning uh, that we're getting in this particular session, it would be wise for us to kind of delve into a specific case study um, of additional clients or, you know, customers or, or companies who have um, done some practical work around digital upskilling um, and, and uh, what, what, what they learn, challenges faced, um, you know, pitfalls to watch out for. Um, but certainly everyone can head to PwC, obviously, uh, to tap on more of their experiences. And, um, and so we've got 30 new messages. Okay, they're all, they're all pretty much thanks, uh, you know, appreciation for the session. For, for those who have already had your uh, uh, pictures taken, I, I would assume that it, the first few screens, if you're appearing in the first few screens, uh, we're done. And if you need to rush off and carry on the rest of your day, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we hope to see you again soon at the next uh, self-driven webinar series, Curating Insights for Business. Thank you very much, everyone. Yep. Have a great Friday. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Good Friday. Bye. Bye.